Our final example of instantiating the generic shortest path algorithm template is Dijkstra's algorithm. Dijkstra's algorithm solves the single source shortest path problem in a weighted and directed graph when all edge weights are positive. The key idea in Dijkstra's algorithm is to process vertices in order of their distance from the source vertex. Here by process a vertex, I mean relax all its outgoing edges. Let's first see why this gives a correct algorithm. Then we will talk about how we can actually process the vertices in order of their distance from the source vertex. Let's see why Dijkstra's algorithm works. Suppose that this is a shortest path from vertex 0 to vertex v. Then we know that, for example, the path given here from vertex 0 to vertex uk must also be a shortest path from 0 to uk. If there was a shorter path, we could take that route to get to uk and then have a shorter path to v overall. So this means that for each i, the distance from, u, from 0 to ui is the distance given by the path above. It is the sum from j equals 1 to i of the edge weight of ej. Remember that in the case of Dijkstra's algorithm, we assume that all the edge weights are positive. So this formula tells us that the vertices on this path from 0 to v are ordered in terms of their distance from vertex 0. Vertex u2 is further away from vertex 0 than u1 is, and vertex u3 is further away from vertex 0 than u2 is. Note that this is not necessarily true if the graph can have negative weights. So this means that by processing vertices in order of their distance from zero, or by processing a vertex, I mean relaxing all its outgoing edges, we will relax the edges of this shortest path in the proper order. In other words, Dijkstra's algorithm is guaranteed to relax this path. Therefore, we can again apply the relax a path property to see that at the end of the algorithm, we will have dist2 of v equal to the distance from vertex 0 to vertex v. And again, by invariant 2 of the generic template, tracing back using the edge to array will actually give us a shortest path from vertex 0 to vertex v. This shows the correctness of Dijkstra's algorithm. Now let's see how we can actually iterate over the vertices in order of their distance from vertex 0. The implementation of Dijkstra's algorithm is very similar to Prim's algorithm for finding a minimum spanning tree. We are going to maintain a subset S of vertices. Initially, S starts out being just a single vertex, the source vertex 0. Also, as in Prim's algorithm, we're going to use a minimum priority queue in order to determine which vertex to add to S next. But the key values that we use for the elements of the minimum priority queue are going to be different in Dijkstra's algorithm than what we used in Prim's algorithm. We, main two in, we maintain two invariants of the set S as the algorithm goes along. First is that our estimate of the distance from vertex 0 to vertex i that is, dist2 of i, is actually correct for every vertex i in the set S. For every vertex i in S, we have already figured out its distance from 0 and a shortest path from 0 to i. The second is that vertices in S are closer to vertex 0 than any other vertex not in S, or at least they are not further. This gives us the property that we go over the vertices of the graph in order of their distance from zero. Note that the two invariants are satisfied at the start of the algorithm when s is just the source vertex zero. We initially set dist2 of zero to be zero, which is the actual distance of zero from zero. And since the edge weights are positive, we know that zero is the closest vertex to zero. Let's see how Dijkstra's algorithm works via an example, how we can actually iterate over the vertices in order of their distance from 0. So we let s contain just the source vertex 0, and we initialize the dist2 array as usual. Now we want to find the closest vertex to 0 that is not already in s. What is the next closest vertex to vertex 0? The key observation is that the next closest vertex to 
to vertex zero must be an out adjacent neighbor of vertex zero. And it is the out adjacent neighbor that is closest to vertex zero. This again holds because the edge weights are positive. The distance from zero to any vertex that is two steps away must be larger than the minimum distance of an out adjacent neighbor from zero. So to get the next vertex to add to S, we want to follow the minimum weight outgoing edge from zero. To do this, we add all the outgoing edges from zero to a minimum priority queue. The key value associated with an edge is our estimate of the distance of the vertex from zero. That is, it's dist to zero plus the weight of the edge. In this case, since dist to of zero is just equal to zero, the key value is simply the weight of the edge. And again, because all the edge weights are positive, we know that this is actually the right distance. Okay, so here we have the priority queue. It has the two outgoing edges from zero, and the top of the queue has the minimum weight edge leaving vertex zero. That is the edge from vertex zero to vertex five. So next we pop the minimum element out of the priority queue. That's the edge from zero to five. The destination vertex of this edge, vertex five, is not already in our set S. So we add vertex five to the set S. So I indicate that with the blue blob here. And we also update the distance, the dist two of vertex five to be dist two of zero plus the weight of the edge from zero to five. So we set dist two of five to be equal to 0 0.5. So note that our invariants still hold. This two of five is actually the correct distance from vertex zero to vertex five. And excluding zero itself, vertex five is the closest vertex in this graph to vertex zero. Next, we add all the outgoing edges of vertex five that leave the set S to the priority queue. Edges from vertex five to other vertices in S are not useful we know that they are not part of any shortest path since we've already found shortest paths to all the vertices in S. The key that we use for, uh, for an edge is dist two of five plus the weight of that edge. This is the length of a shortest path from zero to the destination of the edge E that uses E as the last edge on the path. So in this case, we add the edge from vertex five to vertex one with key value one and we add the edge from vertex five to vertex four, also with key value one. Okay, so let's recap the current status. Our set S contains the vertices zero and five. The priority queue has three edges in it with their associated key values. So now we're gonna to go to the next round and pop the top, top element out of the priority queue. So the top element in the priority queue is the edge from vertex five to vertex one, which has key value one. The destination vertex, that is vertex one, is not already in our set S, so we process it. We add vertex one to S, we update its dist two value to be the key value, which is one. And note that again, this is the actual distance of vertex one from vertex zero. Then we process vertex one by adding all its outgoing edges that leave the set S to our priority queue. Okay, so here I've added vertex one to our set S and I've updated its dist two value. And we should add the edge from vertex one to vertex two to our priority queue with key value of two. So again, that key value is dist two of one plus the weight of the edge from vertex one to vertex two. Now we're done processing vertex one. So we proceed to the next round and we're going to pop the top of the priority queue again. So the next element that's gonna be popped out is the edge from vertex five to vertex four. So we pop this edge out. The destination vertex four is not in our set S. So we're going to add it to S and update this to a four to be the key value, which is one. So here I've added vertex four to the set S, I've updated its dist two value, and then we need to add all the outgoing edges from vertex four that leave the set S to our priority queue. 
So in this case, we just add the edge from vertex 4 to vertex 3 to the queue with key value of 3. Now we proceed to the next round. We're again going to pop the top element out of the priority queue. So that's going to be the edge from vertex 0 to vertex 1. So now something different happens. The destination vertex of this edge, which is vertex 1, is already in our set S. So we're just going to ignore this edge and not take any action. So we proceed to the next round and pop the top element out of the priority queue. That is the edge from vertex 1 to vertex 2. This time, the destination vertex, vertex 2, is not in our set S, so we process it. So now I've added vertex 2 to our set S. I've updated its dist2 value to be the key value, which is 2. And now we add all the outgoing edges from vertex 2 that leave the set S to our priority queue. So in this case, we just add the edge from vertex 2 to vertex 3 to our queue, and the key value is 2.5, which is dist 2 of 2 plus the weight of the edge from vertex 2 to vertex 3. So this edge actually goes to the top of our priority queue. So in the next round, we immediately pop this edge right back out. And the destination vertex, vertex 3, is not in our set S, so we process it. We add it to our set S. We update this 2 of 3 to be the key value 2.5. So now S actually contains all the vertices in the graph. And we can just terminate the algorithm. Nothing more will happen. We've already found uh, the distance from vertex 0 to every other vertex in the graph. So this is an example running of Dijkstra's algorithm. You can verify that our two invariants held throughout the algorithm. When a vertex v was added to the set s, then its dist2 value was always equal to the actual distance from vertex 0 to v. And we added vertices to the set S in order of their distance from the source vertex 0. Let's analyze the running time of Dijkstra's algorithm. The analysis is very similar to that of Prim's algorithm. We push each edge to the queue at most once. This means that the size of the queue is always at most the number of edges. So our queue operations of push and pop will take time of order the logarithm of the number of edges. So the total time spent pushing and popping is at, at most of order the number of edges times logarithm of the number of edges. Apart from the pushing and popping, we just spent constant time to process an edge. We also have to spend order of the number of v vertices to initialize the dist 2 and edge 2 arrays. And of course, our output has size uh, theta of the number of vertices as well. So we have to spend time at least the number of vertices. So overall, the running time is of the order the number of vertices plus the number of edges times the logarithm of the number of edges. So let me make two comments about our presentation of Dijkstra's algorithm here. So our presentation differs from others in two respects. So first is that we restrict to the case of positive edge weights rather than just non-negative ones. The exact same algorithm actually works with non-negative edge weights. But a difference is that with positive edge weights, you can argue that every shortest path is relaxed in Dijkstra's algorithm. When you have non-negative edge weights, you can only say that at least one shortest path from a vertex zero, from vertex zero to vertex V is relaxed in Dijkstra's algorithm. So secondly, we have presented what you might call a lazy implementation of Dijkstra's algorithm here, just as we did with Prim's algorithm. A nice thing about this implementation is that we can just use a standard priority queue. Typically, Dijkstra's algorithm is presented with an augmentation of a priority queue called an index priority queue. But we haven't int introduced index priority queues in this class. And they're also not part of the standard C++ library. So I have presented an implementation of Dijkstra's algorithm here 
that just uses a standard minimum priority queue.